A very good day to you people. My name is Mohit guys. Today I'm going to show you how to make uh, buttons that will help you increment and decrement decrement the sound volume. Okay guys that's all that this project does. It uh, does not have the play, pause or stop buttons. It just has two buttons. Uh, one is this one and I've called it wall up and the other one is wall underscore down. So this project is only about increasing and decreasing the volume in case you would want to know how to make a play pause button or a play pause toggle button I have some other tutorials that do that I have, uh, I have at least two tutorials that show you how to use the sound slider okay in one of the tutorials I've actually shown how to use the um, the slider component in flash to manipulate the sound but guys this tutorial is only about uh, creating uh, buttons like this that increment and decrement the volume manipulate the volume all right so guys uh, before i actually start and teach you how to use these two buttons to increase and decrease the volume i would like to show you a published preview first so a control enter on the keyboard to test the movie guys and uh, guys if i press on this button you can see that it actually takes me to a mute it reduces the volume to a zero and if i press this button you can see that the volume is increasing by 10% every time and uh, it results in actually be the volume being 1 and the, no matter how many times you click this button again and again you cannot go beyond 1 so the volume range is between 0 and 1 guys guys the max volume is 1 if you try to take it above 1 the volume you know the 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 music starts to distort now that's never desirable so it's always between 0 and 1 0 is a mute guys cool so guys uh, the first thing that I'll do is I'll show you how to make these buttons all right uh, these triangles how did I actually make these triangles I made these triangles converted them to movie clips and gave them the names volume up volume down all right so I will destroy whatever is there on the stage and then I'll reconstruct it but I'll keep the action script intact I'll not be disturbing it I'll just explain the script to you all right but let me just show you how did I actually get these buttons on the stage it was pretty simple guys what I did was I I drew a, a perfect square like so right let me change the color <coughs> to this right then guys what I did was I <coughs> used the uh, the free transform tool I came near the bottom right corner I twisted the shape like this right then I created yet another square change the color to a different color right I drew a, a rectangle like this of a different color right and then I just remove the rectangle like this and what was left was this shape the triangular shape I decrease the width and the height like so guys right and when I was happy with the size I selected the shape I set a control C control V on my keyboard and I selected the free transform tool once again I twisted the image like this right and then I made sure that it was exactly under the other button selected both the buttons together and I brought them in the center of the stage I selected the first image guys the top image pressed F8 and chose the registration point top left the type movie clip said OK I did likewise with the other image the image at the bottom I pressed F8 on my keyboard guys chose the registration point top left said OK and uh, then I gave them instance name wall up and wall down so that's wall V capital underscore up for the image on the top and uh, wall down for the other one so that's wall underscore down right that's D-O-W-N that's the way I actually created the, these two buttons that increase and decrease the volume and there you go so every time you click on these buttons guys you can see a nice red glow all around the button on the top button and the bottom button right the alpha changes as well as long as you keep uh, the button pressed the alpha remains changed and you see that nice glow all around the button cool so guys coding time and uh, the coding the script scripting time the script should explain how things are actually working how uh, am I able to manipulate the volume? Let me dive inside the actions panel. Cool. Alright. 
guys uh, from line number one to line number seven you can see that i've used a lot of classes i've used filters i've used the sound class sound transform class the sound channel class so on and so forth okay the first thing that i've done in line number nine is these are the name of the buttons wall up and wall down okay and i've s I, I said i use the button mode property so it's true that'll ensure that i'll get the finger if you see when i'm hover over these buttons i get that nice finger instead of the pointer Right now it's a pointer when I take it over the movie clips, it turns in itself into a finger. Now this finger was made possible through this button mode uh, is equal to true, right? So I said wall up button mode true, wall down button mode true. And then guys what I've done is I've created a variable my glow, which is of the type glow filter which is uh, saving in itself uh, a glow, a nice glow. Guys, this is how you actually instantiate a glow filter this variable is then able to hold some glow now when I don't enter ins anything inside these parentheses if, if I keep it empty it means that I am happy to go with the default and the default glow is red in color and six pixels uh, is the default uh, blur okay so I'm happy to keep the red glow and the default six pixels uh, blur X and Y blur right and then guys the music that I'm playing right now is soothingmusic.mp3 and guys it is lying on the desktop out here so basically I'm bringing into flash interface a file that is lying outside flash it's possible guys and it's possible when you instantiate a variable which is of the type URL request so basically through the URL request class guys I'm able to instantiate and I'm able to tell Flash that uh, the asset that I'm using is lying externally. It's not inside the Flash library. It's outside. So you need to use the URL request class, guys. It's just another way of saying that the asset is lying outside. You just need to point out the file, which I've done out here. Okay. Then you create yet another variable, which is, uh, in my case, my sound of the type sound, in which, guys, you need to load the request so now this variable my sound is holding uh, my request and my request is nothing but soothing music uh, mp3 All right then guys I have yet another variable I know the sound channel is very very confusing guys it's very complex it's confusing and uh, but with practice you know things always become uh, easy and especially so with the sound class now let's understand this I've created a variable which is of the type sound transform now a variable which is of the uh, type sound transform is able to store uh, the volume and the panning okay uh, right now I've created a variable uh, of the type my sound transform and I've made it equal to new sound transform the volume out here if I don't mention it becomes equal to one which is the default guys the panning is always zero if I don't mention it which is you know the sound coming from both the speakers so I've created a variable my transform which is holding volume 1 which is the default guys okay now guys flash says that you need to play a sound play it inside a channel so I need to create a variable which is my channel which is of the type sound channel right then guys I'm playing my sound inside the channel I'm playing my sound which is holding my request I'm playing it inside my channel and then through these two parameters 0 and 100 I'm telling that I want my sound to loop 100 times but I want it to start from the very beginning this is the start time guys these are the number of loops cool right and guys out here in line number 20 I'm attaching an event listener to wall down button okay the mouse event is mouse down and every time the mouse is held down guys I want an, a function called alpha down to be run I'm attaching uh, another event listener to wall up button okay it's also of the type uh, mouse down and I'm telling that I want the function alpha down to be run whenever somebody is holding the mouse down cool now let's have a look at the function alpha down what the function alpha down does is guys it drops the alpha when somebody you must have noticed when I hold the button down on any of these buttons the alpha reduces to 80% alright and also see when I say event.currenttarget.alpha it means the 
alpha of the current target of the event the event is a mouse down and the current target may be wall up or wall down okay so the the the, the word current target out here refers to any of these buttons which is the target of the current event guys the current event is mouse down so the current target could be wall up or wall down depending on whichever button you know whichever is getting clicked at the, or uh, on which we are holding the mouse button down so that is the meaning of current target basically the 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 uh, movie clip in question on focus at that moment so the alpha of that goes down by 80 percent event dot target dot filters so i'm applying my glow filter out here guys i'm applying the red filter at uh, the blur of six pixels that is the default i had created a variable which was holding the blur out here through the filters property just the way we have an alpha property we have the filters property and i'm, I'm telling flash that when somebody is holding the mouse button down on any of the two buttons up or down wall up wall down you should throw a glow all right cool let's move down and here guys i've added event listeners to the buttons wall up and wall down they are of the type mouse up so when somebody is releasing the mouse button i want alpha up function to work and the alpha one function recess the alpha back to one and removes the glow this is the way you remove the glow guys this is the way you add it and this is the way you remove it nothing in the square parenthesis okay i have two more uh, event listeners guys attached to wall up and wall down okay and these are of the type click and uh, they run functions volume up volume down simultaneously uh, uh, respectively sorry let's see what the function volume up does the function volume up it what it does is there was a variable uh, my transform created earlier if you remember through the volume property guys any variable which is of the type sound transform here a variable which is of the type sound transform can hold a volume guys and uh, through the volume property it can hold a volume what i'm doing is i'm saying that through the volume properties a uh, property whenever somebody clicks on the wall up button please increase the volume by 0.1 so basically i'm incrementing the volume by 10 percent okay but also through this if condition guys i'm saying that if my transform dot volume exceeds one please make it equal to one so i'm not letting it go above one anyhow all right and then guys my channel is the channel through which the sound is playing it has a property called sound transform through the sound transform property i'm making it equal to my transform and my transform is holding the volume so if the volume goes up or down the sound playing in the channel also reflects that change through the sound transform property guys very cool here i'm just tracing uh, my transform dot volume so it just lets me know what is the current volume in the variable my transform very simple guys similarly uh, the wall down button i've added event listener of the type uh, click mouse event dot click runs the function mouse down this function mouse down reduces the volume by 10 percent so my transform which can actually hold the volume through the volume property i'm i'm saying my transform dot volume minus is equal to point one basically if somebody clicks on that button please reduce the volume in the but in the variable my transform uh, by 10 percent and if the volume drops below zero make sure that it does not fall below zero that is done through line number 44 the if conditional that i'm tracing the current volume guys and then the sound that is playing in my channel through the sound transform property i'm making it will equal to my transform now my transform through the volume property we are changing the volume out here okay we are either decreasing through line number 43 three or we are either increasing through line number 36 so guys uh, the result was what you just saw so there was an asset soothing music lying outside the flash interface on the desktop i'm able to bring it in but just before you test the movies guys it's essential that you go to publish settings file publish settings and uh, make sure that uh, the destination where your file is getting published is also the desktop it should be the same as where the sound is placed guys it should be in the same folder or the same place all right make sure you do that guys make sure that both the sound and uh, the published destination should be the same guys and then if you test the movies guy movie guys through control enter you're able to increase and decrease the volume have a look in the output panels it will show you what is the current volume right now 
so the alpha decreases on a click on a mouse down right and when you release it's reset so guys this was a short tutorial on uh, manipulating sound through the volume up volume down buttons i hope you liked it i hope you learned something from it guys i'll see you very soon with yet another flash and action 3 tutorial 